All right, welcome to another episode of The Catholic Couple, having fun with faith, family, and friends. I'm your co-host, Bobby Fredrickson, and with me as always, my beautiful wife. Katie Fredrickson. I'm the convert Catholic, and she's the... The cradle Catholic. And here we are on a very special episode on Pentecost. Woo! I thought I'd get some kind of cheer or something there. (laughs) This is a big day, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to the church. So let us start with a prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, to send forth your Spirit to all those who are listening, and to us to guide our words, and guide all those who are listening to be enkindled by the fire of your love that was poured forth on Pentecost for us as a gift to be shared with others. We ask for the Spirit to move with all those who are listening to recommit or commit to the mission of the church, to to love others, to serve, and to take care of the poor. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so I figured let's do an episode on the Pentecost because we haven't, we've done some on the fruits of the Spirit Mm -hmm. and different uh, topics. We did one on the Ascension, but we never did one on Pentecost. So let's just kind of talk about what is Pentecost, the... Well, Pentecost is actually a Jewish feast day, and what happened with the Holy Spirit was on Pentecost. Pentecost just means 50 days. 50 days. So the original Old Testament feast was the Feast of Weeks. And why 50? Why? What's the importance of 50? Okay, so 40 is typically a purification time, right? 40 is usually you go under endure a trial. Correct. 50... Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know. Just well, what's what's the big number seven? Yeah. Seven times seven. It's 49. It's the Jubilee. That's why Jubilee is every oh, 50 God, years. Oh, yes, you yes, this. yes. So, so seven times seven is 49 plus... Because seven is, a perf- yes. seven is a perfect number. Correct. And so seven times seven is perfect. So then, yeah, that's that like... The Jubilee. That was also okay. the year of the... Like a great reset, right? Yeah, that was in the Old Testament. What do they call that? The, uh, That's where you owed your debts. or you, you, your, your debts, debts would be for, forgiven. forgiven. The lamb would go back. Yeah. The, the, the Shema... What is it called? The, the Shemaiah or the... Oh, see, you listen to Bible in a year more than once. No, it wasn't from there. This. That's actually... Um, he talks about it in the Bible in the year, though. The 50... You know, yeah, the they talk Jubilee about it, but the... the the Hebrew term I want to say is the so the, the pe- so Pentecost is uh, fifty days after Passover. Yes, but there correct. is no forgiveness of debts or anything like that. And not that, a Passover. Right? No, yeah, it's fifty days after the Passover. And mm-hmm. What was the important part in the Old Testament? What was happened at the fifty days? Is that the manna? No. Oh, Ten Commandments. They got the law. So this is when they would celebrate the law. Correct. correct. Interesting. See, you knew it. Don't it's mind all coming kid. back to me. I woke up from a nap. Yeah, I was gonna say she was just napping. So I'm like, get up. <laughs> we got time. Let's do it. No, you're like, wait, no. I'm gonna take a 20 minute. Or I gave you a good hour and a half at least. Tell the world our business. Well, we're being real here. <laughs> we're gonna get real. I haven't napped in a long time. Well, the school year's over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well. Well, almost yeah. uh, for the kids in the yes, regular the school, kids, but the principal right. still works. Yes. We we're so not any, downplaying that. Anyway. Anywho. So Pentecost itself, Old Testament means 50 days after Passover. That's why Pent, 50, right? Pentecost, 50 days after Passover. And it was a time to celebrate the giving of the law of the Ten Commandments on the mountain. Yeah, it was a big celebration. And actually, they talk about it in Leviticus 23, 15 to 22. I'll quick read it. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, count of seven full weeks, count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath. And then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. For wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of ephah, of the finest flour, baked with yeast, as a wave offering of the first fruits to the Lord. Present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old, without defect. One young bull, two rams, that will be a burnt offering to the Lord. Together with the grain offering, a drink offering, and food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Then sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering and two lambs, each a year old. The priest is to wave the two lambs before the Lord as a wave offering together with the bread of the first fruits. Do the Jewish people still celebrate this? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses do also. Okay. 
Just this is a, like a big deal to get the Ten Commandments. Like usually we see like um, well, it's a covenant. So yes, no, I know, but I'm saying like you know how like on your on the calendar it'll show major world religion holidays and it'll have Yom Kippur and uh, Hanukkah. I would yeah. think that this well like maybe because the Christians well, they still also celebrate, celebrate Pentecost. They so celebrate it shows festival Pentecost weeks, for both of us. festival of the booths, the huh. Sukkoth. Yeah, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I, I didn't know if they. You know how well, they celebrate it now. Well, I mean, look at the correlation. And there is no temple, so there can't be sacrifices from. Yeah. Leviticus. So, but look, there was wine, bread, a, a, a thank offering. I mean, that's what we it do like in the mass. Eucharist. Yeah, it sounds just like a mass. Who would have thought? Know, I'm seeing Jewish people today who practice Judaism. Do they celebrate Pentecost? I'm just curious. They do. Okay. Yeah, the festival, the festival of the weeks, because it's seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Got it. And then the festival of the booths. That's where they create booths and they live to remind themselves of the wilderness Mm -hmm. when they were in the the 40 years in the wilderness before they went to the land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. So then for Christians, we, it just so happens that Jesus fulfilled the Passover Right. And 50 days later, his 40 days he spent with the disciples teaching and preaching. It's so interesting that that's when the Holy Spirit decides to come, when the, when the fulfillment of the covenant with the Jew, you know, with the uh, Israelites from it's not, slavery. It's, 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 not, sound, it's not by accident, no. obviously. It's all, all works together. Because is, is that that's the important part, is that that covenant, well, look what Jesus did at the Last Supper. He said he's going to create a new covenant, an everlasting mm-hmm. covenant of his blood. And then, of course, he's sealing it with by sending forth the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, the, the birth of the church. Because what is it exactly that Jesus t- did say about this, the Holy Spirit um, and the law? There's a, there's a passage where he speaks about that this, the Holy Spirit with, with God's law. What's that passage? What's that line? I'm trying to find. I haven't. Well, the woman at the well. He said, "You you'll be you worship in spirit and truth." That it's not. It, but Jesus also didn't say he was going to get rid of the law. He said, "Not one I iota the law. It. He will fulfill it." And that's what that's what the Passover was being at the Last Supper was being fulfilled in a totally different way. He's creating a new covenant for us to enter into that through his through his blood to be part. You know the the Holy Spirit. What it says in Romans 5 is that God's love was poured out Mm -hmm. to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we're able to become sons and daughters of God through baptism and through the the, the Holy Spirit, that that's how we are to receive God's love is by the Spirit. So that's how important it is. So if you look, uh, I'm looking at that Francis Chan book, Forgotten God. It's about, uh, it's Forgotten God Reversing Our Tragic Neglect of the Holy Spirit. He's a really good author, uh, P.S. There's there's a few different books. I think he's very relevant and very well. Yeah, if you don't know Francis Chan, he wrote the bestseller Crazy Love. And why I particularly like him, he, he's an evangelical, but he's recently really kind of I found think, John 6, and yeah. he's kind of leaning towards, like, okay, well. He's even on in, a in, quest for the truth, yes. and he's not letting uh, and He's not letting, and in this way. book, he mm-hmm. talks about it, that these preconceived you know, proof texting or people using the Bible to to put whatever ideology that or belief that they have in their denomination, what it is, is he's trying to come to the truth. And what he says about the Holy Spirit is that both sides, the, the left and the right, if, mm-hmm. you know, our church has a problem with it, that uh, it seems that the people who are on the, you know, the, the, the hard right, they are kind of skeptical, skeptical of anything with the Holy Spirit or any charisms or anything of the, you know, yeah. the movement of the spirit and the left sometimes can be just all spirit and no, no law, you know, and that's where I like it. He comes from a both and perspective mm-hmm. of that. We need the law and the prophets. We need dogma and and mysticism we need a combination of both and the only way that we know which way god is moving is by the power of the holy spirit and the problem is is that and you know forgotten god that's the title of the book is that too much i know i like to say that the holy spirit especially in the the catholic circles is it's like the redheaded stepchild of the trinity it's because it's like 
you know, it's it's never talked about. Or if it is, it's like, oh, that's weird. The charismatics, that's a totally different thing. And that's not that's not that's not Catholic, which is couldn't be anything farther than the truth. Mm-hmm. Is that by the power of the Holy Spirit and an encounter with with the Holy Spirit helps us to get closer. It's always bringing us into the Trinity. The Holy Spirit isn't separate. It's always together. And that's uh, one of the, the that's what the, uh, pull out the catechism, because that's what well, the catechism me, says. Go ahead. So uh, the spirit will bring us into life and freedom. Where the spirit is, there is freedom, not bondage or slavery. In our world that is plagued with death, this is a profound truth that points us to real hope. But also he says the spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts people of sin. He does this both before we initially enter into a right relationship with God and as we journey through this life as believers. So it's kind of like that, that conviction of, of the truth, of, of the boundaries that God has set, right? You cross a boundary, you're sinning, right? Like Because those, those Ten Commandments established uh, things that we should the and should not do, a foundation the yeah. of the boundaries, and sin is going against those, right? So... Um, it does make so much sense, but there is there is a there is a line in the in the Bible about the that's the Holy in Spirit convicting us that's of in the Romans law, of the law. That's in Romans, Romans seven, I believe. Um, but you know the, the the thing about Pentecost, which uh, the line I really liked, I think Saint John Chrysostom had a good quote. I'll have to look for it. But what it says in the Catechism on Pentecost, which is seven thirty one. So says, on the day of Pentecost, when the seven weeks of Easter had come to an end, Christ's Passover is fulfilled in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, manifested, given, and communicated as a divine person of his fullness. Christ, the Lord, pours out his Spirit in abundance. And on that day, the Holy Trinity is fully revealed. Since that day, the kingdom announced by Christ has been opened to those who believe in him, in the humility of the flesh, and in faith, they already share in the communion of the Holy Trinity. So, you know, obviously the Holy Trinity has been there from the beginning, but it's been fully revealed to us. I loved teaching the Trinity. It's such a difficult thing to teach, but it was, I liked, I liked the challenge that, you know, you have, I just love that, that whole idea of if God is love and he's pure concentrated love, he is love. He's not loving. He is love itself, right? So love can't. You can't just love yourself, you know. You have to have an object of that love. So God the Father loves God the Son. God the Son loves him back. Again, this this purity that just begets the, all three individuals and that, that Holy Spirit is the love between them, so concentrated and pure that it, it is a whole other uh, yeah, person of the Trinity, which is so beautiful. So it's like if you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're literally filled with God's love. You know, well, f- in order for God to be love, there has to be a triune God. It mm-hmm. has to be the lover, the mm-hmm. loved, and the love between shared between them. Right. That's, that's the, the, the crux of the That was always faith. my favorite way to understand it and to know it. And you still can't fully understand it, of course. But that's the way our human understanding can, yeah, can grasp it, that concept. Yeah, and you know some of the, the best... Theology is always found in, in Romans. Um, but you were referencing the you know the freedom from the law. Mm-hmm. Um, Not freedom from the law. No, but freedom. F- in. Freedom. F- you know, yeah, in the law. Mm-hmm. Saint Augustine said, "God gave us the law so that we might seek His grace, and then God gave us grace so that we might be empowered to keep the law." Mm-hmm. You know that's the that was the problem with the Old Testament is that all these laws is that we're trying to the people were trying to keep the law on their own will is that that's why they had right. so many laws so they they focused this on those boundaries but at the end they all would fail but they had mm-hmm. no external power helping them we are mm-hmm. way more blessed right. than even the the saints of old before you know, Pentecost, because after the Pentecost, we're literally filled, if you're baptized, with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And some obviously stir that into, into the, into the working. And some people are just let it, you know, don't, don't embrace it. Don't, you know, sometimes, you know, all throughout Acts, it isn't just a one and done thing with the Holy Spirit either. It isn't like, I'm baptized. I don't need any more of that Holy Spirit. (laughs) Keep that Holy Spirit over there. Keep it in a box. But what the Holy Spirit is, you know, it's like in, um, 
in C.S. Lewis's The Chronicle of Narnia, they, they describe God as a lion, but not tame. That the Holy Spirit can't be put in a box. Mm-hmm. It can't be controlled. It's also known as the wild goose is another term for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, those because, are some good little videos too. Yeah, the wild, uh, from um, Father, Father um, Pavanka Pavan- from the, the yeah. president of Steubenville. Yeah. And it's on formed if you, if you don't have that we'll link to it. I think there's some on just YouTube if you just But I, I think but that's things. why most people on the right are scared of the Holy Spirit. Because they like boundaries. Because they like order <laughs> and the and they like to know what's going to happen. They like the <laughs> rituals and they don't like yeah. things to change and most people don't because it it does take a tax on you. Mm-hmm. But if we want to be fully alive in our mm-hmm. in our faith then then we have to be open to what the Spirit is leading us to because if not, then who's in control? If everything I plan out is to what I do, then I'm not relying on God at all. It's I'm me, me, me. That's not God's will. And the problem with the Holy Spirit is, if there is a problem, is that it's unpredictable and it's usually nine times out of ten not what we would want or what we would want to do because usually what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do is to forgive calls us to give up, calls <laughs> us to to serve, oh, calls well. us to do something hard. Yeah. He calls us to to love somebody that's unlovable. He I think calls your us favorite line that you like to say is coming up here. It's that if we want the comforter to <laughs> yeah, comfort we us, we, we have be to un- be willing to be uncomfortable. 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 <laughs> uncomfortable. Yes. And guess what? It's true. But that's no, we don't like but it. if we don't if but we've always done is. what we've done, that you always get is. what you got. Mm-hmm. But if you want to grow, you have to put your toes into the into the least. Start with the shallow, <laughs> into a, to, a new place, and then you can move into the deep. And that's where God's calling us. And Jesus has put out your nets to the deep. Yeah. The deep isn't getting up, doing the same thing over and over again. And that's what this Pentecost is about, is that these people were used to, to worshiping the way that they did. They're used to do the things that they normally did. Mm-hmm. And they weren't expecting that all of a sudden there was going to be this wind and tongues of fire and that God was going to call them to go all over yeah, the world. Let's, let's look at this. So we just, you know, we did a, uh, we, we did an episode not too long ago on the Great Commission where Jesus says, go now, right? Like, go make disciples of all nations, of all nations, by the way, baptizing, you know, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, you know, baptizing them in the Father, Holy, you know, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Behold, I'll be with you, right? And they went, yeah, all right, let's go do this, and went and hid in an upper room for nine days and prayed. They could not do it on their own. There was no, there was no action there. They literally watched it. You know, they lived with God for three years, watched him do these amazing things. He kept saying, you're going to do even more amazing things than me. And they're like, uh, and that even in that, uh, last, uh, part like that, that, that great commission, they doubted then after they saw him die, rise from the dead, do more miracles, hang out with him for another, hang out with him for another 40 days. They still didn't get it. It's, it's like, I just feel so much better about myself that (laughs) sometimes when you really look at the apostles, like they needed the Holy spirit in order to go. They didn't leave the house until that Holy spirit came and equipped them. And look what happened. It's, they probably taught, like think about the conversations that probably could have ensued from that conversation. How are we going to go out to all these nations? I don't speak their languages. I don't have like, they're going to kill us the minute we leave the house and talk about Jesus the way they, you know, like there's so many, they were probably, how are we going to come up with a game plan to make this happen? And we're not expecting, you know, they did, they were told that this advocate was coming. They were told all these things, but how it was going to play out, I doubt was exactly what, you know, they, they thought was going to happen. Right. And so it took them by surprise. It gave them so much strength and courage to go out and, you know, proclaim the truth in all these different languages, because again, this was a festival that you would have to go into Jerusalem to, you know, celebrate, right? Yeah. And One of so the three times of the year you, you're called to go to Jerusalem. Right. And too. so it's these people, these these people from all these different areas of of you know that world at the time, and they did speak all these different languages. So I just think it's pretty awesome. Well, I'd like to the that just shows too that. 
this message is for everyone. Right there, that's that's Catholic. Right but, there, that's but the what word is Catholic. it also it's even, universal? But it's even made deeper for all. than that, what is it doing? What is Pentecost doing? Well, it's when? bringing back the Tower of Babel. It's there bringing it back go. together, full circle, because what God's kind of undoing a lot of the undoing a lot of the stuff. Putting, you know, I shouldn't put, say undoing, but putting setting it back in right together. order, mm-hmm. setting in the, the original order. Because at right. the Tower of Babel in the eleventh chapter of Genesis, is that man tried to create and become God, basically, to create a tower, to reach the and heaven. And what God does, he comes he, down to our level, he becomes one of us that we can share in his divine nature, and then he equips us with his spirit. Instead of us trying to become God, God becomes one of us, comes down to our level, does it for us, and says, you know, you're, you're never going to get to me, I'm going to come to you. And just, you were doing it the wrong way, do it my way, Right. I think that's just so cool. I mean, yeah, it took it a really that, long time. Yeah, the, the Tower of Babel was taking, they all spoke the same language, and now he made it to where people can't communicate. Right. Everyone's speaking Confusion. a different language, and now he's taking all these people from different backgrounds and different nations and different tongues, and now everyone is able to understand everybody by the power of the by, Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of truth. Speaking the truth should ignite something within you when you hear it, Right. Yeah, you want to know something else is cool about Uh-oh. the similarities between Pentecost? Kind of. I like this kind of stuff on the door. So, yeah, me too. So, <laughs> it, it Sorry. Sorry. So what listeners. happened after the first the first Pentecost was that when Moses came down with the law, oh, they were worshiping the golden calf. They were wor- worshiping the golden calf, and then what happened? He, we had yeah, like a third of them died. No, uh, oh. it was an exact number. So oh. what happened was is that the Levites got together and they 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 knocked down they killed 3000 people. Mm-hmm. 3000 people died on that day. So on Pentecost. Um, so now Peter stands up after they had received the Holy Spirit. Um, he received Were 3000 pro- baptized. Hold, hold on. Yes. Okay, sorry, I got really so excited. Pe- so Peter said to them, "Repent and be baptized." And in, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is made to you and to your children that all those far off, whomever the Lord God will call. He testified with many other arguments, with exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and were 3,000 persons were added that day. So even in Peter's preaching on the Pentecost, he's filled with this power. This guy wasn't a theologian. He was a fisherman Mm -hmm. who was hot-tempered and all these things. And look what, in the 50 days in the Old Testament, the the Levites, who were the priests, Mm -hmm. and these are the new priests, they slayed 3,000. Now they added 3,000 back. Numbers, this isn't accidental. There's never accidents in the Bible. Mm Mm-hmm. And then right after that is one of this is what the church this is what the church is built for. These are the four things about the church. Then they def- this is in um, Acts Acts two forty two. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, which is the tradition because there was no Bible yet, and to the communal life, so living together. Breaking of the bread, which is whenever they say breaking the bread, is the mass. Mm-hmm. And to prayers, and to praying together. So that's what they did together. And awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. You know, and at that moment is that now they were empowered. All of a sudden, you know, <laughs> when was the last time 3,000 people were added to the church, you know, at one time? It's like, it's, that it was well, a miracle. Well, I do want to actually, uh, well, no, the, um, when... Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared to St. Juan Diego. So 15 million were added total, but well, not in one day. Well, not like yeah, a, but there was a significance to who left the church from the Protestant Reformation uh, and then were added to the church with that actually is a very similar number. So, no, it's not 3,000, but I just I, I, I just think that's God. You know, we, we don't see big picture all the time. But in those moments, you can see big pi- so a glimpse of a big picture, you know. Yeah, and there's a bunch of times in the in Acts too where they're where they're praying to be filled with the Holy Spirit, where they've already been baptized, and then they're praying again to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know. And that's for me when I've encountered the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was baptized, obviously I was a baby, but then when I became Catholic, I was confirmed. 
and you know it's a sealing of the Holy Spirit. But but then you still have to stir the Holy Spirit into practice. You have to be docile to it. Mm-hmm. You also have to surrender. There also has to be some type of movement to move you. It's just like that if if it's too loud, if it's it's just like you know hearing the voice of God in general. Is that, that you if have you're to not, be a willing per, per, yeah, you have to be wi- you have to be he willing. Force he, he, no, he doesn't. But us. you also have to we be aren't his robots. Right? You, al- you also have to be open. Mm-hmm. Too many people are, you know, what are some of the reasons why people aren't open to the Holy Spirit? Maybe a fear of the unknown. Yeah, the fear fear of maybe or what actually, God's going to call us to do or give up. Or general doubt and, you know, like, oh, that's old Bible stuff that doesn't happen today, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, usually it's fear-based, you know? It's like... Fear or doubt, yeah. Fear or doubt, which is necessary. You also need fear of God, but you need love of God. You need both. The problem mm-hmm. without fear, then it's, oh, God's always going to forgive me. You can do whatever you want to do. You know, that's, that's, I forget, there's a famous story of a Protestant, maybe Jimmy Baker. I think it was Jimmy Baker. He was like a, uh, like an evangelical televangelist in the 80s, and he had a a fall. And, uh, and, uh, you know, he he went to jail and all this stuff was going on. Yeah. And then um, one of the other pastors was like visiting him in, in prison. And he said, when did you stop loving Jesus? He said, I never stopped loving Jesus. I love Jesus. He said, what happened was I stopped fearing Jesus. I stopped fearing him. He said, everything was okay. You know, I still love God, but the, 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 the justice, the repercussions, the, the just once saved, always saved, do whatever you want. doesn't matter because I'm going to go to heaven because I, I know Jesus and I love him. But they're still. Yeah, but if you're in a relationship with someone, you're going to want to honor their Yeah, but you can still, but of... you can still love people and then treat them bad. That's true. You know, but if, 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 if the fear is like, for example, say someone's in a relationship with somebody and they're cheating on them and they love them, they probably do. But at the same time, maybe they were caught in a compromising situation or something, but there was no fear that, you know, they did it before and they're going to keep doing it because the wife won't leave and she, she won't stick up for herself. There's no fear that she's going to leave. There's tons of relationships where that stuff like that happens, where there's no fear of the other person's going to, there's not going to be any ramifications or consequences. But is that love? That's not loving someone. No, it's not. It's, I'm not saying that Jimmy Baker even still loved God. He obviously didn't. But that's but, what he was saying. But he was saying that he yeah. believed that he still loved God. God, mm-hmm. which could be true, but it, it also is showing that he, he only is seeing half of God. He wasn't seeing, there was no fear. If Fear is also like a, an awe. So you know, you're saying we should have a love for God and a fear of hell? And I that think should be a balanced? fear of God, and that's the most important thing. I think that we need both. That's is mm-hmm. our battle cry of this show. God is that, doesn't send anyone to hell. They choose it freely. But there also needs... Ju- Justice and mercy. Mm-hmm. It isn't all no. mercy. If it's no. all mercy, then there's then no can reason really do whatever you can we do want. whatever you want. Mm-hmm. It's all and that's what the Holy Spirit, which yeah, you touched think, on, convicts do you us. Think God's not a doormat. He is definitely <laughs> not a doormat. And mm-hmm. and I think that's where a lot of the well, it's okay. Love is love. Do whatever you want to do. It's all good. No, no, no. It's not. These aren't made up things. Right. And there are re, there are some sins that cry out that need justice. And even when we die and Jesus died for us, there still has to be justice for those things. We've talked about this many times with the broken window. I think that there needs to be an understanding of a big picture of God's plan and what the purposes behind certain things. And I think that when you really do understand the big plan, like the, you know, of of God's purpose for certain things for us, that when we stray from that, it makes sense why that would be considered a an abomination to God, because it does not follow that plan. You know, it, it that he still loves us, he wants what's best for us, but he also has a plan for us. And when we're not in alignment with that, it's not because it makes him mad, but it because it's not what it is not what's best for us in the end, right? Like in the big picture of things, but we don't see the big picture, especially the way the devil works is in complete confusion, taking the smallest amount of truth, manipulating it and tweaking it into something completely the opposite, right? But and I think our our culture has really just embraced so much confusion and so much in that relativism that 
it is so that now when we speak the truth, it does sound, it just doesn't sound right anymore, you know, to, to, to the culture as a whole because of that smoke and mirrors and complete distortion of the truth. But when you really take the time to see the big picture, when you mention love is love and like those things that cry out to God, it's just such a small piece of this big puzzle that all makes sense when it's put together if we really understand yeah, God's plan. If we, just, plan. Take it out if of we just take it out of context, it does sound, well, why, so what, right? But when we really look at the big plan, which is why a theology of the body episode would be really cool to, to do, to really d dive deep into that meaning of Maybe we can get Christopher God's West plan. on. Oh, yeah. Why not? God's plan for our bodies, God's plan for our lives, God's plan for us. You know, I mean, I don't or think Jason God, Ever. and in all honesty, I don't think that God wants us eating these uh, chemicals and processed foods either. I think that we have a lot of, Preach you know, it. there's just a lot that in our modern life, in our modern mentality, in our modern everything, do everything quick and uh, busy, busy, busy. I don't think that's part of God's plan either. No, we're At living in a broken all. world, living and there's a, a lot broken of broken world. things, and people are willing to, 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 it. to change profit so that's why for truth. So that's why God sends this advocate to help us navigate navigate and, and, and to, di to discern right that's what the spirit but we have to call upon what, him and ask him because he's not well, again we're not robots being what's programmed. that line from hebrews that i know you memorized it from hebrews that the holy spirit is like a, a sword no that's scripture that's the word of god is living and effective the, yeah the word of god but the word of god is the spirit no, it's of god talking about no it's talking about scripture I, being I, that scripture is alive that it's living what, and effective. what animate what animates and it scripture? pierces through bone and marrow what animates scripture <laughs> how does it? How I, is it alive today? Yeah, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's but, yeah. that's what that it, this isn't a dead book. That's why the Bible affects you so much different because mm -hmm. it cuts us because it's a living document. It's it maybe have human authors, but the Holy Spirit is guiding it. Yeah, that's why when we pick it up today, it isn't like it was written. 3,500 years ago or 2,000 years ago yeah. or whatever it's they wrote applicable it. applicable and relevant to you right now. But that's why now. the Holy yeah. Spirit helps us to discern think, cutting through. Thing, you know, I don't know, you know, I feel like we've talked about this before, you know, there's there's really nothing new here going on under the sun, you know, or whatever that's called. You know, like, yeah, like, yes, I think that there's a... a uh, we are on the other side of a Christian nation, right, of a Christian civilization. We're on the other side of that. I think that paganism is completely on the rise. And so we as Christians are going to continue to be more uh, as outsiders, especially if we stand for the truth. Uh, but it's nothing new that Christians hadn't had to undergo before. I mean, there was that's exactly what the first generation of Christians had to sure. go into was go out like on Pentecost, go out into the world and But I think that's part of what you're hitting on is part of the, the problem is that why there's so much problems in the world is that there's so many people who aren't even baptized. Mm -hmm. There's some people who didn't even go to church, I get it, and those numbers are coming down. But the, the number of people who aren't actually even baptized, like the whole country was always baptized. Yeah. So that in itself is an exorcism prayer and it's opening less right. of a, a, a protection that you know this co country is consecrated. Mm -hmm. When you get so many people who aren't even baptized, I mean, that's a, it's, it's going to be just a rise of some more dark. I mean, yeah, it, just this look. isn't just what's what's on the rise right now in our country isn't just, you know, an absence of God. It's an insertion out, of uh, evil uh, things like evil, demonic things are well, like on the rise. And, it, and it's being now it's so acceptable. Like I just saw a video on there's the th three of the biggest concerts stadium tours going around. There's moments in all three of these concerts where they worship Satan. Literally, Taylor Swift. There's a song Taylor called Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift Aww. has a song called. I thought Will she was wholesome. Has a song called Willow, and during the part of the thing, she says, "Awaken the demons," and the whole crowd screams it out loud. What? And they, she looks like a witch no wearing. Way. Okay, well, I didn't know she was one. Hello, of them. hello. <laughs> I, Beyonce, the other one. I've heard of Beyonce. Yeah, well, Beyonce. well, she also she also has this whole part where it's talking about mind control and there's like a like a spell and she does all this weird stuff that the crowd Ooh. was so like like everyone had to like look away they were so uncomfortable about it. Then the weekend oh, actually flashes Satan on the 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 
the screen yeah. multiple different times. I really like the weekend too. Well, that's I mean that's the world. <laughs> this is hard. The de- the devil they make good music. They do. <laughs> you know, I like the weekend's music. The, yeah. The devil sure party is good. That's what it, they take good things and they twist it for for their purposes. But right. but that's what's going on now. Look, look at the Grammys. Look at all these things. They they get together, and now it's more open. It's acceptable. They're allowing that stuff to happen. Before that, that was there was decency stuff. That's like opening up. I wonder why so many people have mental illness. Yeah. Some, all these different problems, depression, anxiety. These all things, things are all yeah. connected. It really is. And it's mainstream. That I mean, Taylor Swift. I mean, like every who, which teenage girl and twenty year old. I'm looking that up. I don't think I believe that. I thought I, she was a. Good, I thought she was Christian. Man, you are naive. I am naive. I are you a Swifty? <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not like a dad. Okay, well. But I think I, I saw the video with my own eyes. Some, I always thought that she was still somebody that you know just kind of stayed away from that stuff. I didn't think she. Have you into seen, it. all her songs are about how horrible her boyfriends are and all those? I mean, come she's on. She's talented. She, she is talented. Well, yeah, she talented sold her soul. And she, songwriter. she sold her soul oh, to Crossroads. You one of those? Yeah, that believes in that cornfield stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, that is how they, that's how they get their contracts. Selling your soul uh, in the, it was in it, yeah. Well, what is that? Said that, that, that's that, that? Was it Eric Clapton? Who's, who did they say did that? Well, they What's said it was legend? Eric Clapton, but it goes back to, to the blues. That was the, um, mm. Robert Johnson. Oh, okay. Robert Johnson. But when you look at it, the crossroads, that's where we we're all make these decisions. Right. You're going to go to the left or you're going to go to the right. You know? Well, you don't mean politically. You mean No, I mean like choosing. on the actual path. Are you yeah. going to go towards God? Are you going to go towards what's in it for I you? I would say more north versus south. <laughs> <laughs> well, Up versus well, in down. the Bible, left and right have to do with left is always bad and right is good. Uh-huh. Left, like the left hand, there's always. When well, they, I'm left handed, so we well, don't in need the, to the go Bible, there. when they oh, talk so about left, you. when they talk about left yeah. and right, the the left pushes away and the right gathers in in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Left hand is always like doing the sin, huh. even though we're both left handed. Is that why they would try to make kids become right handed because they were like taking the Bible literally like that? Could be. Well, it's only 11% of population is left-handed. And we are both left-handed somehow. And no, our kids both are not. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, I know goofy. you were really nervous that we were going to have some kind of disability with our kids being right-handed. <laughs> I was like, no, I just, I think there's, there's oh, a, well, we I think there's a lot of, adv- I think shoe. there's a lot of advantages to being left-handed. Yeah, I do too. And sports. Yeah. Writing, not so much. I think, I think that there's a creativity there too. Oh, I am creative, huh? Yeah, you're creative in a different way. I mean, look at your content. <laughs> uh, are you laughing at me now? Look at all that content. Oh, man. This is what I deal with. All right, so back on, on anyway, Pentecost. So this uh, is the birth the of the Spirit. church, uh-huh. Holy Spirit, birth of the church, the unity of bringing people together. And just look, all throughout Acts, if you haven't got a chance on Hallow, they have an... Uh, 28-day challenge mm-hmm. with uh, Scott Hahn going through Acts and does a great job of explaining all this different stuff. And this is this is what we're in. Father John Ricardo's organization is called Acts 29 because there isn't a 29. We are the 29th chapter that we are called as the church to, to move forward mm-hmm. and to go make disciples of, of all nations, teaching, baptizing. Mm-hmm. And that's this is the age of the church. This is what we are called to do, and we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. No. So and what, now that we have a, a generation or two, right, or we're going into a culture now that's such a huge shift away from God and away from, the, you know, any kind of uh, uh, objective truth or, you know, boundaries, that that's actually a mission field now, right? That you may be the only Jesus or representation of Christianity that someone knows. How are you going to model that, right? How are How are you going to live your life effectively and in, lo- and in love, and th- the only way that you really could truly be that role model or be that to someone else is by asking the Holy Spirit daily to yeah. work through you, work in you, help you, because you can't do it on your own. Well, that kind of leads me to what I kind of wanted to get to, asking especially a cradle Catholic, is that s- say somebody here who's listening who hasn't felt like, you know, okay, I've been baptized, I, I was confirmed, but I've never had any kind of Holy Spirit moment. I've never had an experience or an encounter with the risen Lord in a way where he, I felt the Holy Spirit. What are some suggestions that you would do? I mean, I, I know what I'm going to chime in, but I wanted to hear somebody from your perspective on if, say, someone who's listening, like, I want that. I, I want to be filled. I want to be... Yeah, I never felt the Holy Spirit or felt an encounter with God until 
you had your conversion and we went to that amazing parish conference and it was in adoration there you go that was that, that was the first thing that was I was the gonna first say. thing that I at first time I ever encountered actually feeling something and then I'd say the first time I ever felt what it means to be um, filled filled with the Holy Spirit would be at the Alpha Retreat Weekend, which was all about the Holy Spirit. And honestly, was just asking him to Well, to that's come what in. it says. It in, was an um, extreme w- warmth. I felt like my, my legs were locked into the ground like cement, and I felt this extreme warmth on my hands. Uh, and I felt this, yeah, just extreme, like a warmth, a warm charge through my body. I mean, I've only experienced that a few times. Yeah, but look how much it sustained you and propelled you into mission, into uh, you know ministry work, mm-hmm. and what we what we've done. I've had multiple. I, I'd say I have. I've had. A, I've probably had a dozen. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm always, you know. So, well, no, I mean, so I mean, what I would whole... say is first, first yeah. and foremost, is Luke chapter eleven, uh, thirteen. Uh, or start at 11. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asked for a fish or hand him a scorpion when he asked you for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Mm-hmm. So first and foremost, you have to ask. Those who ask, receive. Mm-hmm. Knock, the door will be open. But you got to ask for the right reasons, not because, hey, I want to get rich or, hey, I want to do this. Hey, God, or I want your will. Feel the fe- you know, it's, it's not about the feelings. About, it's yeah. about... Mm-hmm. It's about him coming in and helping mm-hmm. and being with you and guiding right. you. And that warmth that you're feeling is that it's just like when when you married me, you, know, you felt all warm. You know? <laughs> it's it's so like a marriage. But that's what that's what it should be like every time we receive the Eucharist. It's it's very similar to a marital embrace yeah. of that ecstasy, is that that's what God wants for us yeah. in the spiritual, mm-hmm. in communion. That's what communion is. It's a spiritual uniting our spirits with god that's literally what it is and so I, what i was going to suggest is what you said which was adoration mm-hmm. or any kind of conference or something where it it seems to be helpful when there's other christians around right. i think that the holy spirit also moves and maneuvers in a community of people full of faith I agree. and if you try to do it on your own which is possible by asking and praying uh, even if you're by yourself in an adoration chapel in front of the Blessed Sacrament and you're praying for, you know, the, the most powerful prayer is come Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And we start all of our prayers like that because we, you know, what it also says in... Uh, it's going to help you talk. It's well, not only that, it's, it's also in Romans, I want to say it's Romans 5, is that we don't know how to pray, so we need the Holy Spirit to, to intercede for us to be able to pray. Uh, I want to get it right. I believe it's in fifth chapter um maybe it's before that well again in that book forgotten god he mentions the spirit helps us speak when we're in precarious situations and need to bear a witness and that's mark 13 11 and luke 12 12 which means that don't worry about what you're going to say just call on the Holy Spirit and he could speak through you. But that would be to like other people when you're in certain situations. And I've done that where I've I've prayed before going into a really difficult conversation I'm going to have and I have asked the Holy Spirit to help speak through me. Yeah. No, it's Romans 8:26. Mm-hmm. In the same way the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself intercedes in inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches his heart knows what the intention of the Spirit, because it intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. And that's right before my favorite passage, which Mm -hmm. we know that all things work together for the good. Mm -hmm. So that if we want to pray, if we want to get an understanding of what God's will is, we have to ask him. We can't assume that we would know it. We can't presume that what we want is what God wants. We have to ask God, what do you want? And by opening ourselves up to, well, guide me with your spirit, mm-hmm. you know, not in a weird Star Wars way, but in a real <laughs> practical relationship where we cultivate this relationship through us. Number one, you have to be in a state of grace. So if you haven't been to confession in a while, mm-hmm. get a clean start and ask for that grace to know and have an experience of God's love. Because what happens when we encounter like what the apostles did in the upper room, 
the 120 it wasn't just the apostles, the disciples, and it was the, do you know what the significance of the 120 is? There's 120 people in the Pentecost. Well, 12. 120, there was 120. 12 times 10. No, so anytime in the Old <laughs> Testament, any, where a town was started, uh, a, a, a new town or a new community was 120 uh, people. Oh, that would be how okay. a town would become a town. Yeah. So it was 120 people with obviously the Blessed Mother, the first Novino. Yeah. But then, look what happened. It's like, oh, from yeah. there, you know, what I really like on that weekend away with the Holy Spirit weekend, the way that Nikki Gumbel talks about th that they're pilot light Christians. It's like, you know how a pilot light, we all have that little flame where yeah. the furnace is at, but it takes that, <laughs> that yeah. gas. And that's what the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is. Now Do think that noise of, again. <laughs> <laughs> You know what that sounds like I when do. it when the furnace turns on, yeah. Yeah. and when the furnace turns on, it's like an explosion. And it can heat the whole house. It can heat the whole house, mm -hmm. and if you haven't had one of those experiences, then pray for that in your life mm -hmm. because you won't. Yeah, it will be sometimes. It, it's kind of scary, but it's scary good. Mm -hmm. Is that because God's calling you to something different? I would have never thought in a million years that I would be here talking about. The Holy Spirit on a podcast. <laughs> in your I've never said, you know, this. Is my, you know, what I was when I grow up, I want to do a <laughs> podcast on Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit and the yeah. Catholic Church. Me too. Oh my gosh, me too. How God, for sure. But it all was all by God's will yeah. and God's Spirit of being open. Okay, okay, I trust you, God. Some goofy uh, priest asked me to go to this thing. I didn't know what it was. Oh, goofy. Well, he didn't even know what it was. He didn't explain it to us. And then, sure enough, we were just docile to the Spirit moving us. Like, okay, yeah. well, hey, whatever the situation. But when we got there, what changed was adoration, but it was other believers. Music. It was the music, being the atmosphere. Moved, and but, confession. But it was also being and around confession. a community of people that, like, faith in numbers. is like mm -hmm. strength in numbers, but yeah. faith in numbers. So what's great is our uh, our church for Pentecost, after Mass tomorrow, after the 10 a.m., we do, an, uh, this is, I think, the second year, they, we do an encounter afterwards. Which so, is adoration. Which is a, a, adoration with praise and worship music, and we have prayer teams, and last year we helped do the praying, and, and praying for other people for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when we pray for that, guess what? God moves. If we don't pray, God doesn't move. So, I mean, that's part of this this episode is that if you, this hasn't been your experience with the Holy Spirit, ask yourself what's holding that back, it, whether with God unleashing his spirit on you or you not opening yourself up to it. What, what's, what is that? And pray about it. Like, hey, Lord, I want to feel your love through me because it's only by what we receive that we, we can't give what, what we don't receive. And if you have a short temper or you don't love people, if you don't do the things you're supposed to do, how can you expect to do those things if you aren't filled first with God's spirit? Because Remember are, that the Holy Spirit is love, like is God's love um, filling you. That's and it's literally work what it says. through you the way God intends, the way he has made you, created you with the right gifts and talents. And then it's like a supercharge of that, you know? Yeah, and that's... That's what it says. Is it says it's dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dynamite. I'm going to give you the power of the and Holy Spirit. He's your Spirit. advocate, and he's there with you. It's it's how he's able to to work through you. You know, we need. But he's also never going to. Again, he's not a creepy, uh, mad scientist that has created these beings that he can control. We're not robots, right? So he's never going to uh, work through us without us being open and participatory within that but god is god not but god is, is not, not tame he's definitely not right. tame he's so going to call you to you know, the door. <laughs> he's going to call you for for something that that something bigger than you can even imagine in your life you know there's many a times in both of our lives that things and ideas that we had on what we should be doing whether that's in our marriage or in our jobs or whatever it may be that god is calling us to something totally different and we don't understand it and it's difficult and it's sometimes it's like you were there and sometimes it's not what it's supposed to be. And sometimes he moves us along. But ultimately, when we're docile to that and we trust in God's plan that we are where we're supposed to be, that 
if we notice and if we pay attention, mm -hmm. that we'll see what that is, whether if that's a person who just needs to be witnessed to, if that's a, somebody that needs to be loved, somebody that needs to be treated. Yeah, that's a good point in the moment. Like, not like yes, we need to think big picture, but we also need to think small. And he can work through you in very small situations too, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's usually, you know, I try. That's the hardest part. That's my prayer I've been trying to do a lot. It's like, Lord, give me, Give me the kingdom vision in real time. Like help me, help me in real time to slow down and to see others the way you see them. Help me to to be you to them. That's mm -hmm. the hard part. And stopping just my normal going through the motions type just right. living. Right. Is that because you know, stopping and looking somebody in the eye and being just present. Being present to them. in the present moment. Yeah. Which is really not you know, but especially those people who we, we don't know what we should say. Yeah. You know, well, it's like, like I said, ask the Holy Spirit to work through <coughs> you and he will equip you. Yeah. Don't worry about what you have to say. Just be present. So I, I guess just kind of just sum it up. This Pentecost is, is an opportunity, and it doesn't have to be just Pentecost, but this is a, a special feast day of the church, is that this may be the day God wants to change you. He wants to change you in a way that's more abundant and it's more... Try, you know, full of different trials and different, different, you know, adventures, different things that he may be calling to you that, you know, or, or he's calling you to be a different person than you are right now. He's calling you to be the best version of yourself. Like St. Catherine of Siena says, be who you were meant to be. And that's how, that's being, Angel. set the world on fire. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit's also known as a fire, fire. Mm -hmm. wind, right. and water. You know, so maybe you'll have to put out fires. Maybe you'll have to be the fire. Maybe you'll have to be the wind to blow down the doors. Maybe mm -hmm. you'll be the fire of someone's love. Maybe you'll be the person that, you know, needed a friend. You're the person who gave that the wise words to somebody to encourage them. You never know what mm -hmm. people are going through, and you'll never know what you should be saying if you don't stop. Ask God, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? Come, Holy Spirit, guide my conversation. Guide this day. I offer this day to you. Be with me, Lord. See, in the help small me. things of your yeah. life, and you, you, it, it, He really does help you. It's, it's funny because, like, when I would have to go into difficult situations and I don't pray, I come out like I was, you know, put through the ringer. But on the ones that I have, when I remember to pray, it is a lot easier. It's funny. How Isn't that works. funny how that works? It actually, yeah, it actually does help you. He does. Well, anything no, this else? really does work. Anything else you want to add on the old Pentecost? Mm -mm. 50 days. So mm -hmm. take advantage of this Pentecost. Ask the Lord to, to, to send forth the Spirit in a special way and be open and listen and be quiet and be ready to move. Say, I'm willing. You know, the best and most dangerous prayer is the transformation prayer. Well, Lord, I surrender. I'm open to transform my life. I surrender everything to you, not just, not just Sundays, not just, you know, hey, when I'm praying, but I surrender my life. And it's a dangerous prayer because we have ideas of what that looks like, but God's ideas are so much bigger than ours. So, yeah, because, he, again, he sees big picture, and we just see our perspective. So let's end with a prayer, and uh, we'll, we'll pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How about that? Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to send forth your spirit to these airwaves, to those who are listening, to encourage, fill the hearts of your faithful. Send forth your spirit. Kindle in them the fire of your love. Set their hearts on fire with your spirit of love. Pour your love out into them that they can feel how important you are to them and to your mission of your church to make disciples, to teach, and to love and serve. And we can't do it on our own, Lord. We ask for an outpouring of that spirit to fire us up, to take this little pilot light of ours and blow us up for you. Fill us with your fire. Fill us up with your love. Help us to go forth and make disciples. We ask this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I hope God touches you in a special way and have a very happy Pentecost. Thanks for listening.